no, I refuse. I'm not gonna let them take it. <laughs> I'm Chris from Auto Academics, and today we're gonna take a look at the all new 2021 Ford Bronco Outer Banks 4x4. I always get a little skeptical when a nameplate is revived after many years. It doesn't always work out as hoped, but I'll tell you right now, this Bronco is legit. And despite my objections, they did take it back. Also available as a two-door, our tester today is a four-door iconic silver metallic 2021 Ford Bronco Outer Banks 4x4. Standard features include 18-inch machined black painted aluminum wheels wrapped in 32-inch 255-70 Bridgestone Dueler all-terrain tires, LED headlights, signature daytime running lights and tail lights, fender flares, easy fuel capless filler, fender tie-down hooks, powder-coated tube step, and front and rear tow hooks. Inside, you'll find a leather steering wheel and gear knob, dual zone climate control, 60-40 split fold rear seat, carpet flooring for both rows, eight inch digital instrument cluster, locking glove box, 12 volt power points, tilt and telescopic steering column, first and second row USB ports, ambient footwell lighting, heated front seats, remote start system, reverse sensing system, sync four with enhanced voice recognition. How can I help you? Ford Pass Connect 4G Wi-Fi, Hill Start Assist, Rear View Camera, Sirius XM with 360L, Terrain Management with GOAT Modes, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, Grab Handles, Zone Lighting, and Keyless Entry with Push Button Start. Safety features include plenty of airbags, rear seat reminder, and Ford Copilot 360 that includes auto high beams, Bliss Blind Spot Information System, Pre-Collision Assist with Pedestrian Detection and Auto Emergency Braking, Lane Keeping System, and Rear Cross Traffic Alert. Now for the options that consist of the high package that adds the 12-inch LCD center stack touchscreen, 360-degree camera, additional sound deadening, forward sensing system, LED approach lamps, and LED spotlight. The Lux package provides adaptive cruise control, B&O sound system with 10 speakers including subwoofer, heated steering wheel, smart charging USB ports, connected built-in navigation, and wireless charging pad. This truck also has the 427 locking rear axle, HD modular front bumper, front steel bash plates, towing capability, keyless entry keypad, leather trim and vinyl seats, and a few other items that weren't sent to us, including the hard top, top and door storage bags, cargo area protector, and roof rails with crossbars. Total MSRP is $53,380. It's really difficult not comparing this Bronco to a Wrangler, but it's obvious that Ford benchmarked quite a few things. While the Outer Banks trim is configured more towards daily usage than traversing Baja, it's still very well equipped with 32 inch tires, 8.3 inches of ground clearance, steel bumpers and bash plates, and skid plates for the engine, transmission, transfer case, and fuel tank. And for those who want more, there are over 200 factory backed accessories available too. The doors and soft top roof can be removed as well. We didn't attempt the doors, but after releasing two levers behind the sun visors, folding the front panel back is a piece of cake. Retracting the top fully can be tedious though. Removal of the quarter windows by sliding the panel in and out of the bottom channel posed the most issues, but it does get easier with practice. Plus, Ford has a very helpful tutorial on YouTube for first timers.
The panels easily store in back and once it's all done, it looks sick. Be sure to take your time as you put it back together because any gaps in the panels can make for very noisy commutes. Speaking of the back, the rear door is dampened, holding it in place wherever you set it, but it does require some force to open. The rear window can be raised and anchored in place, and once inside, you reward it with 38.3 cubic feet of cargo space. Fold the 60-40 split rear seat and you get a total of 83 cubic feet in all. While an optional 7-speed manual or 2.7-liter EcoBoost V6 engine are available, this Bronco was equipped with a standard 2.3-liter EcoBoost inline-4 with engine start-stop that makes a very impressive 300 horsepower and 325 pound-feet of torque on premium fuel. It's made it to a 10-speed automatic transmission that sends power through a Dana 44 Advantech 427 solid rear axle. Max payload is 1,370 pounds with a max tow rating of 3,500 pounds. The optional four-wheel drive system features a two-speed electromechanical transfer case with a 306 to one low ratio and 6780 to one crawl ratio with the 10-speed auto. This truck has a locking rear differential and the locking front diff is optional. Trail control is present as is trail turn assist and all of this can be controlled independently or via the GOAT modes where you can select between normal, eco, sport, slippery, mud and ruts, and sand. Max approach and breakover angles with the 35 inch tires are slightly less than the Wrangler at 43.2 degrees and 26.3 degrees. Departure angles are the same at 37 degrees. Our Outer Banks tester with the 32 inch tires provides 35.5, 20, and 29.7 degrees respectively. Max water fording for the Sasquatch package is 33.5 inches. EPA estimated fuel economy is rated at 20 miles per gallon city, 22 miles per gallon highway, with a combined rating of 21 miles per gallon. Auto academics saw an average of 20.4 miles per gallon during testing on mid-grade fuel. And while regular fuel is accepted, premium fuel is recommended for best performance. One thing that you can definitely appreciate is the back seat space because there's a decent amount of it. I'm only 5'8", but leg and shoulder room are good, as is headroom. Taller passengers may have to watch their heads while being jostled about during off-roading, but you'll notice there's no cross member at the B pillar, allowing for a true open air experience when the top is down. Throw in some door pockets, behind the seat pockets, power outlets and cup holders, and you've got a rather complete package. The cockpit of this Bronco is designed with function in mind, as well as a bit of style too. The steering wheel is thickly padded and the infotainment screen is an eye catcher. Sync 4 works well, but I wish the instrument panel could be configured a bit differently. I'm not a fan of how the tachometer is displayed. Maybe being bigger and more pronounced would help. I was worried about these seats as well because they look as flat as the Mach-E's, but that was unwarranted because they actually feel fine and they look good too. The buttons and knobs are all rubberized in case things get messy with the top off and there are plenty of places to hold on to if needed. Some are flimsier than others, but they're there. Finally, the B&O stereo sounds fine, but the bass is lacking, struggling at the low end, and can be easily overwhelmed. 
but overall, it's strong with plenty of power for when the roof is off. So now that we've addressed all of that, it's time to take it out and see how it drives. I've made a few comparisons between the Bronco and the Wrangler in this review, and for the most part, things have been a wash. They're both very good at what they're designed to do. Except in one area, on-road driving dynamics. Ford got that one right. Everything is well-controlled and comfortable, almost like a garden variety crossover and not a hardcore SUV. Understand, while this can be spec'd even more hardcore, the components on this outer bank trim are pretty hardcore. The tires will howl if you go through a corner too quickly, but the center of gravity is good with reasonable body lean. Yeah, the brake pedal is a bit soft, but it's plenty strong enough and the steering has a good heft. Now, if I'm going to be honest, I was a bit disappointed when I first saw the engine specs. An inline four cylinder in this? Come on. But like the seats, that was unwarranted too. This little turbocharged engine makes very good power. I drove about 100 miles on the highway and never once wished for more power. It's torquey and responsive with plenty of gears for power and efficiency. I got about 23 miles per gallon on that trip. Not bad for something that's shaped like a brick. Sight lines are good too, with plenty of greenhouse all around you. The top is decently insulated as long as you get the window panels on correctly. But if you think that'll be an issue, get the hard top. Although there's nothing like driving with the top fully off. Sadly, I wasn't able to take this off-road, not like I did the Wrangler, but from what I've seen and read, it's just as glorious. And while it took me a few days to get used to driving the Rubicon, which I explained in that review, I had no such issues with this Bronco. <laughs> Call it blasphemy, but I just had a Jeep owner give me the wave. <laughs> So there you have it guys, the all new 2021 Ford Bronco Outer Banks 4x4. It's obvious what Ford benchmarked for this truck. And I've got to say, for an iconic nameplate that's been revived, they did a good job with it. As always, if you like this video, or off-roading in general, give it a thumbs up and let us know if you're in the Jeep camp or are down for Team Bronco in the comments section below. Finally, if you haven't done so already, by all means subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss what we have coming up next. I'm Chris, Model Academics. Thanks for watching.